I'm a Pommy. This is a podcast. Welcome to the next episode of the show. Before we kick off, I just want to say a very special thank you to the London Hotel for their hospitality. Uh, please come down. It's in Paddington. It's an awesome spot. Come down with your mates, have a few drinks, enjoy yourselves um, before the Christmas break. Uh, lastly, if you need any support with your home loans, equity release, investment properties, maybe you're coming off of a fixed rate very, very soon, please hit the link below and contact me for some help. Sasha, welcome. How are you? I'm well, thanks. Thank I'm a little bit nervous. <laughs> <laughs> Sasha is, so we'll do a quick introduction, save your marriage in 90 days, get into some intimacy, love and respect back and understand women. Should we elaborate a little bit further on that? Yeah, so I'm a relationship and intimacy coach for men. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it's not just a catchphrase. Um, my program, The Mind Heart Method, um, I work with men in the program. So it's a three month container where um, we work to save their marriage in 90 days. And it's got a very strong success rate. It's, um, it was funny when I did it, I did a little post yesterday about upcoming guests and any questions. And I had the most responses about you coming on and it was all men messaging me one of my That's mates a good sign. yeah oh, it was like it was like i need a bit of this so i'm hoping that the next like hour or so we're going to unlock some of those um key lessons for for guys to kind of uh, look into help their relationships and so forth um but in the words of mel gibson what do women want <laughs> Well, I don't know if Mel Gibson really have figured it out, no, but he I'm did. glad no, he asked did, the no. question. Um, what women want, so initially the first thing that women want is for their uh, survival needs to be met, like anyone, you know, even in management, Maslow's hierarchy of needs, we all need our survival needs to be met. Mm -hmm. And this has been the point of marriage for hundreds of years. It, it's been a business contract, it's been about survival, and it's only around the 70s in Australia where women could have their own credit card, right? So it's only very recently we're getting into a time and stage um, and, you know, many young people probably didn't even know that this was just recently, but, you know, women have only had the right to be financially independent recently. And, yeah. you know, we're still levelling out the pay stuff, but we're talking about Australia, Right, many places in the world this is not the case. So we're in a really new stage of evolution for relationships. Mm -hmm. So initially all women are seeking uh, safety and security. So they're seeking <coughs> stre strength and safety from their man, right? The man is the provider and the protector. Mm -hmm. But once those needs are met, right, sort of where we are today in Australia, UK, America, mm -hmm where women can be financially independent, there is support, you know, the, the husband doesn't necessarily own them. The next stage is the heart phase, right? So that's when they're seeking emotional connection. And this is why we're seeing a lot of divorce, um, mostly made by women. And this is sort of the disruption phase where we are at. Right, okay. So, um, so I have a question to go on from that. I would say that a lot of what I would call alpha males are good at the start of that point. And then when it comes to the hearty stuff and the connection and the physical side of things, some of them lack a bit of that emotional connection. Um, would you say that that's a fair assessment? Yes, it's a fair assessment. I love the, word, the way that you used alpha males. I love an alpha male. <laughs> and I work with alpha Because we males. want to be tough. And, yeah, you know. and, you know, <laughs> and, and all men should aspire to be an alpha male, right? This is what all women want. They want a masculine man. Um, it goes back to down. the lobster theory, doesn't it? <laughs> What's the lobster theory? Lobster theory goes back. I think Jordan Peterson wrote it in his book, Ten Rules for Life. But it's basically about, um, essentially, lobsters are the oldest living th creature on this planet at the, at the at the moment but the theory is that when you look at the male hierarchy in lobster theory there will be very small sort of scared lobsters and there will be huge lobsters that are very masculine and they go through this fighting phase to reach the top point and the top point normally that top point that top five ten percent they tend to get all of the women and then the lower the lower hierarchy obviously 
you know, they're weaker, they're smaller, but it, it, he uses the same theory associated to us. So he kind of linked the two together, right. saying this is the oldest form of lobster theory. Yeah, and then it works that way. <laughs> and, you know, in terms of alpha male, or we're talking about masculine energy, and, you know, if we want to be sciencey about it, we're talking about hormones. So high mm-hmm. levels of testosterone, testosterone, maybe adrenaline, and this creates different makes up, makeups in people, and this is what mm. creates attraction as well. Right, so for women, you know, they can be very attracted to an alpha male, to a masculine man. But when the man goes to the extreme masculine alpha male, so you mentioned your background is in the military, so, you know, a lot of men in the military, highly alpha, highly masculine, highly left-brained, muscle-dense, it can be very hard for a woman to maintain a relationship with this kind of man because they're often lacking in yeah, other areas. Yeah, so... The Royal Marines, which is the group that I was in back home in the UK, has the highest divorce rate of yeah. any armed forces in the United Kingdom. Yeah. So now we know why. <laughs> yeah. And this is all hormones. Yeah. So those very masculine <clears throat> men really need women around them because they can't be in their feminine. They can't create oxytocin or much estrogen in any, any other ways, mm. right? So I'll, I'll use sort of the more fluffier terms and then the more <laughs> yeah. scientific terms. just depends who's listening. It's all the yeah. same thing, yeah, yeah. right? Simple brains. It, it's like a, a need. It's a physiological need, right? A lot of those men who are in those roles also, there's a lot of confusion going on now that we must feel happy, you know, men must follow. A lot of these types of men can't find, can't feel happiness. This is years of evolution. They're Mm. made to be warriors. They're meant to uh, look for danger, right? So when they're sort of relaxing, they can't seek, they can't get that happiness. They find that feeling of ease, peace, joy, love when they're in connection with a woman, with the feminine, right? Through a relationship, through sex, through intimacy, So this is like a need we have, but at the same time, it's really hard for that woman to get her needs met through this kind of man. So this is a little bit of a rebalancing process. Mm. And really, these intimate relationships, they're a next stage in human evolution, right? Because obviously something's missing. It's the top lobster, right? Or as you said, the Mm -hmm. largest lobster, but he's not going to survive long without a woman in his life. So he needs to evolve. So what... So this this comes normally after that initial phase, right? So you meet someone, you're dating them, everything's going really well. Um, you you kind of probably get to the point where you get comfortable, I suppose, in the relationship. And then women want, uh, is it more attention, more affection, more emotional uh, need because... You've, you're kind of got this point now where I don't know potentially kids are coming around the corner and, and things like that, and a lot of these guys are kind of just not just unable to unlock that side of themselves. Is that yeah. is that where things start? Is that you know a year or so, cu- or year or two yeah. into the relationship? So we're talking about a certain category of men, and we're sort of and what you've shared is sort of what it looks like on the surface. The guy's mm. not helping; he's focusing on work, and and this also goes for your sort of CEOs and yeah. you know <laughs> your mental alphas so you've got your physical alphas you've got your mental alphas and most men are just either in their physical body or in their mental body but there's really no even knowledge about the emotional body or the spiritual body yeah right this is weak so it's kind of like going to the gym and you're always training your arms Mm. you can look great you'll look great in a t-shirt in a suit (laughs) but after a while if you're not working your core or your legs you're going to have some damage. And then soon you won't be able to work out your arms and that everything's going to go weak, right? So we have these four bodies. But most men are never conditioned or they haven't been taught about these other bodies, right? And, And this is very important for love and intimacy and longevity in a relationship Mm. once a woman's survival needs are met. So what you're sharing about, you know, a woman wants more attention, she wants more affection, and these guys can't meet it. So I'll get to the core reason of why, Mm -hmm. because this is actually the same even maybe for your not so alpha males, for maybe your better males or how I call it, maybe if you're being a wife pleaser, so you're doing everything to appease your wife. Those women also are not happy. So I, I, um, I'm going to touch on a friend without naming names. I have a friend that's quite successful. He's got a great job, nice car, owns his own home. He's really nice. 
But when I say nice, he's just a nice guy. Like, a really nice guy. And he hasn't got that, I don't know, I'm going to take control in the relationship mm -hmm. alpha side to him. And I find that we there's a repeat conversation that he has with us all the time where it's like, oh, I met this nice girl, but, you know, things didn't work out because, you know, X, Y, and Z. And, and mainly to do with, and a lot of the girls that he's been attracted to have kind of turned around to our friends and been like, oh, you know, he's a really nice guy, but he's not mm -hmm. a man yeah. in that sense. Where, what, what's he doing wrong where you're, you're obviously saying that these women, their needs aren't met mm -hmm. for these particular people. What, what can they do to improve that? So the premise of my program and how I work with ma men is that a man is the leader in the relationship, mm -hmm. right? And this is based on the nervous system. So, um, you know, there are studies in silverback gorillas where the alpha male or the largest gorilla, when he's in stress or when he's angry, the other gorillas feel it and it increases their stress, the women and the better males, right? And this is actually the same in humans, right? <laughs> Our nervous systems are like... Wi-Fi hotspot. So your wife is tethered to your hotspot. Yeah. Okay. The women are the gatherers, right? So they were the least, you know, the less strong species, the less physically dominant. So we have developed skills of intuition, of you know, understanding who needs nurturing. This is how we survive by understanding other people's needs. So we are always attuned to the man that we're with of how they're feeling, mm. because it was only you know, in some where we live in Australia, there's a about three women a week die of domestic violence. So a woman is always attuned to a man's emotions because many years ago, a man's emotions, if they raise their hand, that's it. Or if a man is in fear, it means that something bad is going to happen, right? That it's not in control. Yeah, yeah. So if he is avoiding his own emotions, if he's built up fear within him, uh, if he doesn't have good self-esteem, confidence, she can feel it, Yeah. right? So it doesn't matter about his job, about his car, she feels that he's less powerful than her. And that doesn't mean much to a woman because the first thing a woman is always looking for is strength and safety, mm -hmm. okay? There's no point to emotional connection <coughs> if um, your life is at risk. So that's yeah. the first part, right? And I'll, what I've noticed with most of my clients, even though some of them, you know, different, different ages, different roles, but often they are good at, very good at being a man in the world being good at it, being an alpha in the world. They're all different, you know, different yeah. roles. But where they struggle is staying the man at home. And this is really common in domestic life because when you're living with women, with children, we were never designed this way, your testosterone drops. Okay, you relax at home, you want to switch off. Yeah, they say, they say that after men have kids that their testosterone levels will drop slightly. Yeah. And um, I actually went and got my bloods done after because I've got two girls, so I'm in a house full of women. Yeah, yeah. And um, and I've only got my mum, so literally my entire family is is four women against me. And um, I got my bloods done afterwards. And my testosterone levels had dropped yeah. since having kids, and it was I didn't know that it was a thing until until it happened to me. I was like, why why am I not? We're just feeling... a bunch of hormones. Yeah. It's, it's like women's um, cycles, they sync. So women in mm. the same house will have their period at the same time. As your girls get older, you'll start to mm. have that fun at home. But we are literally just hormones mixing together. Yeah. Right? And and so men and women <clears throat> never live together in the hunter gatherer days. You work with men, you live with men. This is why after COVID most men are running back to the office and most women <laughs> love it because they they feel good there, right? It's a hormone boost, it's a testosterone boost, there's yeah, the yeah. overcoming challenges. So it doesn't mean that marriage and uh, is, is a bad thing. It's great. You can feel safe, you can feel relaxed, you can enjoy being in the feminine, right? Which you probably didn't feel when you're in the military. But you have to work a little bit harder now to boost those levels, right? Not not to even mention what's in our water, what's in our food. Um, there's a lot of estrogen everywhere. So the good thing is hormones are made in the brain, mm. right? So it's our thoughts and our feelings that create our hormones. And then that actually dictates our relationship. So it's not just about telling your friend, oh, hey, you know, say this to her or do that because it's the way he does it. It's yeah, yeah, what yeah. she feels from him, mm. right? So it's, um, I, I would say that when I moved, when I moved to Australia, two, two things happened. Mm -hmm. So I had a one year old girl and, 
um, I was going through a job change. So my provider syndrome, as I would call it, kicked in because yeah. I was no longer, although I had done for the last three or four years of our relationship, been that security and that blanket and everything else. I landed in Australia and I was like, I don't know what I want to do, who I want to be. I, did, I knew that I didn't want to be in the fitness industry anymore because I wanted to make sure that I could take the kid, the kid, the girls to school, pick them up, and the hours just don't work in that type of industry. So I went through a phase of provider syndrome, feeling inadequate. Um, I'm not you know, paying for all the household needs. I'm feeling a little bit crappy inside about the fact that I'm not doing that. And then obviously just having kids, my testosterone levels had dropped as well. So it was kind of this big combination. And I do remember during that period of about 12 to 18 months, we had a few blow ups yeah. like during that period. And it was it was me. It was my like how I was feeling, how I was reacting to a situation. Obviously, things are different now. I'm back in the gym like five days a week and, you know, work's going well and I'm progressing, which is what I think men need quite a yeah. lot all the time. Um but it, how do how do men who are in relationships navigate a situation where something's gone wrong, as in, like, <clears throat> I don't know, maybe they've just been made redundant or they've just had children and they're spending a lot more time in the household and they're not around those other males, you know, at work and, and so forth that they can beat their chest around, yeah. and et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> um, but how, how, do, how do they work through that in a relationship um, because it, it does happen and, and things can go wrong and um, finance can be one of those key factors or having kids can be one of those key factors or just, like, I don't know, getting injured or anything. Yeah. You know, it can, it can lower a man's self-esteem and then they don't feel like they can... They get that provider syndrome, I suppose. How do you navigate through those things? Yeah, and, and it's destined to happen, right? Because we're really in a phase now where technology is moving so quickly our world is changing so quickly so the world now just wants us to evolve mm. so if you think that you're going to tick all the boxes in life you know and cover everything up with just money and whatever staying fit something is gonna sort of fuck up basically yeah. right so as a man you can't always just rely on your physical body anymore or on your mental body mm -hmm. right this is where we go to strengthening the emotional body and the spiritual body Sometimes things happen outside of our control, like an injury, like moving. Mm -hmm. So you might not always be able to rely on going onto the gym to using your mind or finances. So where do you look, right? Yeah. First, you need to know how to regulate your emotions or what they even are, because those emotions are gonna start to trigger things, right? They're gonna make a bad situation even worse if you're unable to manage them, right? And the next part is also your spiritual body, right? There is more than this three-dimensional world. When things are really bad, um, you know, we have a very high suicide rate. You were talking about your friends in the mil military. If we're just here and, and things just happen, life is gonna get very tough. So we need to form a deeper connection. And this is a real challenge for men because men have been emotionally suppressed for many years. Mm -hmm. Okay, women have been physically suppressed financially, but men have been emotionally suppressed. So when it's tough emotionally, it's very tough for a man. Um, in the past, it's mostly been externalized. So this is through aggression, violence. These are wars in the world. And now that's not as appropriate anymore to go out and kill someone. Yeah, so yeah, now yeah. it's being internalized. So depression, uh, illness within mm -hmm. the body mm -hmm. and suicide. So managing those emotions. So um, in summary, in my program, how I work with men and how I support them, the first part is managing their emotions, using stress as a tool, right? Mm -hmm. Turning it from lead into gold. So it never disappears. You can't suppress it or if you release it, there's more. You've got to handle it in a different way. You need way. to have a functional <laughs> way to manage it, mm. right? So you release your emotional baggage because otherwise you're walking around as basically in fight or flight mode. Yeah. You're, you're a danger zone. You're a danger zone to yourself and people. So you have to become safe, right? The next part is understanding connection, mm -hmm. you know, understanding women, understanding those around you, how you connect to the world, uh, love, connection, communication, conflict with integrity, right? We can't avoid conflict. So, you know, the wife pleaser will avoid conflict and their wife will continue to test them. Um, or, you know, the very sort of masculine man might, 
you know, be more cold or dismissive. So both of those create problems. Mm. So we need a way where we're able to manage conflict safely with yep. a woman or yeah, with your yeah. children that yeah. will completely change the trajectory of their life as well. Um, and then the next phase is your purpose in the world, your leadership, because as you were saying before, that's so important for a man to have a purpose, a mission to be charged. That is what keeps a woman attracted to him mm -hmm. is his passion, right? Otherwise you're like an uncharged battery. There's no attraction. Well, they say that about very successful sportsmen that have achieved everything that they want to achieve. And then they get super depressed afterwards yeah. because there's like, where, where's my sense of direction? Where's yeah. my purpose in life? What do I do now? Yeah. Um, it's, it's one of those things. I remember like we, we literally just did a podcast uh, Monday um, with one of my friends, Connor, who had a very toxic way of dealing with what he wanted in terms of success and it manifested as stomach cancer. Yeah. And like he's got a super cool journey. He went from stage four cancer to all of these alternative medicines, started seeing a hypnotherapist um and it really was like beneficial for him but he would he would admit himself that he is emotionally disconnected from his partner at the time and 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 but now things obviously he's worked through it all um therapy is one of those things that when when i was in the military it was kind of brushed off a little bit mm -hmm. And I would say that now it's more one of those things where I'd say we're a bit more Americanized, where it's like cool yeah. to go see a therapist and stuff like that. Um, but where where do you start when you're when when someone comes to you and they're like, you know, I've got this problem. Um, I'm blowing up at my wife. Um, I'm argu we're arguing all the time. We're butting heads. Where where do you start in that process from a professional yeah. perspective? So just on a note of therapy, right? So mm. therapy is is great. Um, the traditional model of therapy doesn't always work for men. I have an article on this. Um, there's nothing wrong with the therapy. It's just the structure. The approach okay. to it. Yeah, <laughs> so it can work, you know, if you're in a really traumatic time, mm. right? You've been through a trauma. You're in the middle of something overwhelming to kind of calm you down. And But long term, just say if you're... A lot of couples therapy can make uh, couples worse. They can sort of end the relationship yeah. um, because it's actually very, the way that men and women cope with stress biologically and the way we're conditioned as well is very different. Mm -hmm. And that's when the problems begin. It's very good for a woman to go to therapy and express herself. That's the way she releases stress. Yeah. For a man, um, it can be good for a short time just to vent and get it out, but not long term. Why? because you're dropping your testosterone levels and there's no solution. So after a while, it can make you feel very disempowered. Yeah, I feel like men are very solution orientated. Yeah, and <clears throat> so if there's no solution and you're constantly sharing your emotions, you're not only kind of ingraining yourself in the past and in the problem, but you're, you're, you're dropping your hormones, mm. right? So it's, it doesn't always work. So. The way that I work with men uh, initially, uh, for a lot of men, it's actually very hard to verbalize what is the problem, mm -hmm. what is going on, right? And, th and that's actually 50% of solving it, to understand what is happening. So they might come and say, oh, you know, my wife's not happy with me, we're always fighting. But that necessarily isn't the problem. That's not the core of the issue, no. The, the problem is always <coughs> the emotion that they're feeling. So a man will usually will come to me, um, Unfortunately, at the, at the worst case scenario, when the <laughs> yeah. marriage is about to end, the wife's given them an ultimatum. Yeah. Um, I would love to work with men earlier on. I have worked with younger guys, but most men come into action when there's a problem. That is the biology, right? Mm -hmm. They set, reserve their energy until it's time to hunt. Yeah. That's how it's done, which can work short term, but long term in a relationship, it doesn't work because usually the wife calls divorce or she's done. It's a shock for men. Mm. because the woman has been aware of it and dealing with it and trying to fix it for often years, if yeah, not yeah. decades. Yeah. The man, meanwhile, he's also been in discomfort. But the way that men cope with stress is they disconnect from the emotion. So when you had to go to war, uh, when you have to do uh, have a difficult conversation and do what needs to be done, you need to switch off the fear in order to do it. Okay, yeah. That's the biology. That's the first thing they taught us in the military yep. was get rid of your any any form of guilt abolish yeah. it uh this is the job 
Yeah. You know, it was it was a situation where, you know, if you'd fucked up, you know, just just tell us immediately. We'll resolve the issue as quickly as possible so we can move on to the task ahead and we can get on with it. And I think like a lot of men think like that. Obviously, it's like it's like the the old saying men are from Mars and women are from Venus. It's like it's, it's the that's what's really going on. We yeah. are different species and we expect each other to be the same, especially now. Mm. But we have absolutely diff- different physiology. So if you leaned on your wife, you would probably crush her after a while. If she leaned on you, it might feel really nice for you. Mm. That's kind of what's going on. We are completely, we have different brains. Our brain activity is different. Our physical activity is different. We cope with things differently. Right, yeah. so the underlying issue for a man um, is always an emotion and it's usually an emotion that they don't know how to solve, right? Because they've been conditioned, you know, and also their biology is just telling them to suppress it or let it out through anger. Yeah. When the man doesn't know how to solve something, he avoids it or suppresses it. Or moves okay. on from it and just goes, I can't fix that. that that's avoidance, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, then <clears throat> it's kind of gets worse and worse in the relationship. Mm. So half... You know, getting halfway to the solution is just actually acknowledging the problem, acknowledging the painful emotion, so then you can work your way through it. We've got um, uh, me and my me and my missus. We've got uh, I would say quite good at communication. Um, if there's any issues or anything that's bothering us, we're we're quite good at dealing with it almost same day. Like, that's great. Like I can kind of tell when she comes home from work and she's had a bad day, and I'm like, okay. I won't ask her about it. We'll just have a little cuddle and then we'll, you know, I'll be like, something you want to talk to me about? Because I can kind of tell that there's something that she needs to offload. And whether she wants to get it off her chest that day or another day, that's absolutely fine. But I would say that we've got quite good. But how do I, in my own relationship, improve it, make it better? Mm-hmm. Well, what's the problem you want to solve? Like, well, what I mean, do I you want to make? One. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're all right. Um, we, I, I'd say that we probably had the toughest times um, during that COVID period. Okay, uh, so so let's not look for a pro- problem, but what would you want to improve? What do you want more of? If you kind of look into your relationship, and I'll I'll tell you what actually helps. So right now mm. you're looking that way. Okay. So you're thinking and you're referring to past experience. Yeah. Okay, but your nature <laughs> is is a is avoiding painful things. Yeah. So it's in a man's nature to say everything is all okay. Yeah. You yeah. know, unless it's. Yeah. So. I'm getting nervous. The, <laughs> so where the truth always lies. So our, we've got three brains. Well, the yeah, brain yeah, yeah. that we always talk about in our head, the brain in our stomach. So gut instincts. A lot of men are aware of this, and mm-hmm. let's talk about more now. But the most powerful brain is in the heart. So it's scientifically proven that the heart receives information at least seven seconds before the brain. Mm. Okay, so if someone probably in the military was about to put their gun out, your brain will only get see it when it's too late. But yeah. your heart will feel it before. Yeah, feels yeah, yeah, yeah. it, right? Okay, it yeah. feels it. If you've been in those situations, <coughs> it knows it. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to ask you this question from your heart. So I'm going to get okay. you to close your eyes to get out of the logical mind, the left brain mind. Dave, are you going to do this as well? Uh-huh. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. So just closing your eyes and just <laughs> forgetting that we're on a podcast and this is on camera and everyone's looking at it, but just switching off, going into your eyes, mind, and just feeling into what you would love more of in your relationship or within your life. What would your heart love more of? I think we'd like more time together. Okay. So just notice what you're doing. See, that answer came straight away. Mm-hmm. So it's a protection from the brain and it's a giveaway that you're saying, I think we. Okay, yeah. Okay? We so, would. Yeah. So okay, the I'll heart. <laughs> so the heart needs a little bit of time because it's likely in day to day you're using your brain, which is for most men the left brain. So 80%, 90% of time you're in your left brain. Mm-hmm. And this causes half the problem because that is not how you form connection. You do it from the heart space. Mm-hmm. So I'm just going to get you to place your left hand on your head, okay? And this is just like signaling. This? Yes, <laughs> that's fine. You're just signaling to your subconscious mind that you're going to step out of your thinking mind and now place that hand on your heart and you're going to step into your feeling mind. So same, same hand, yeah. Just placing that on your heart, okay? And allow yourself to let go and allow yourself to receive what you would love 
and give it a few moments, allow an image or a feeling to come to you. What would your heart love, whether in your relationship or even in your life? We'd like more intimacy. Okay. So I want you to feel into you. So what would you love more in your relationship? And I want you to imagine it as if it's happening now. Mm -hmm. What would that feel like? What is that from your perspective? My wife is holding my hand. We're having a proper conversation, looking into each other's eyes, out having a cocktail. Yeah. And so how are you feeling in that moment? How is this scenario making you feel? Happy. I think okay. she's looking sexy. Okay. So I want you to stay within yourself and just notice your feelings. And, and this is really, I'm pushing you because this mm. is not the way we're um, taught to speak or to act. And, and this center's actually switched off, right? So you're looking at your wife. She's looking sexy. She's happy. She's looking at you with admiration, mm -hmm. love, connection. How are you feeling? What are the emotions? And we won't use the word happy because happiness no one knows what that means so what's an emotional word for the way you're feeling within yourself i'd say i'm feeling in love with her in love so you're feeling love <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah so the feeling you're wanting more of is love so it's in your heart space so describe it how do you feel about yourself when you get that feeling how are you oh, feeling i feel amazing it's like the best thing in the world you feel amazing so does it make you feel energized energized Mm -hmm. um, masculine yep. is that a thing yeah so I'm going to feel into it with you right mm -hmm. just to support you because we're actually in an energy field we're all connected mm -hmm. right so and I teach men how to do this and this is how they start to understand their partner to keep my eyes closed. you just stay in that vision and I'm <laughs> going to join you don't worry it's, it's all <laughs> the camera won't see you. so I just feel straight away you inflate as your wife looks at you right mm -hmm. so your body inflates your That's emotions inflate you raise, you're physically, and you're really going into your chest space in your heart space. So your heart comes to life, you're feeling, it's like the world becomes more sensory. It's like you've, you know, taken some drugs or someone slipped yeah. something into your drink. It's like <laughs> the world becomes alive, right? And this is what an intimate, loving relationship with a woman and monogamous relationship really does. It opens a man up in their heart center. And that's what you're after, that feeling more of the time, which, you know, it's it's normal for it to sort of go away when we get into routine, into partnership, into who does this. So describe it a little bit more what you're looking for, that feeling. Describe how you're feeling. Uh, I'd say I feel elated, like you say, like, you know, someone slips something in your drink yeah. and you're, yeah. you're having the best time ever. Um, so it's ecstasy. Well, yeah, ecstasy, oh. yeah. They don't call it that for no reason. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, yeah, so difficult. are you feeling your heart warm? So your yeah. Heart, yep. yeah, yeah, like so I'm more relaxed. Um, my stress is gone. Yep. Um, yep. I'm not so, thinking about the, any mm -hmm. problems in my life. I'm just thinking yep. about, you know, my partner and having a nice time together. Yeah. So you can open your eyes now and I just want you to notice if you feel different physically or emotionally. Does your physical body relaxed. feel, feel yeah, relaxed? More relaxed, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so what you are needing, and see how this started? There's no problem, okay? Mm. And this is the case for most men, even if there's deep, deep problems. Mm. Because it's a protection from a problem that can't be solved. Because where men aren't taught to activate is their heart center, mm -hmm. right? And this is where we're going in evolution, the heart center. So. Uh, Maslow's hierarchy of needs, survival needs, right? They're met for most people, more or less. The next needs are self-actualization, which is through the heart, mm -hmm. okay? So what you're seeking from your partner is very hard to access in any other way, except for drugs, which we've got a high epidemic of that as well in Australia. Yeah, yeah especially and, in Australia. And you know why <laughs> a lot of these things are becoming legal as well. MDMA used to be a drug for therapy, for couples therapy. Yeah. And all these drugs, what they do is they activate certain parts of our brain because our brain creates chemicals. It creates its own drugs, which you just experience now. Mm -hmm. And I experienced it with you. The heart got warm. And this is what you experience in love, in connection, uh, you know, through 
sex as well. Mm -hmm. There's more oxytocin, all these things. But even without the physical side, when you're just looking at your wife through the eyes, it creates that. Okay. That was really good, actually. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know if you had any experiences, but... Me? No? Oh, wait, what? We're talking to the camera guy, by the uh, way. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, well, you were talking to Ross about it, so I just, I just took a step back. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. See, you got out of it. I want to see how you changed. Yeah, yeah. And you did. It was, do you know, um, there's uh, meditation gives you a bit of that. Yeah. Um, and it's something which I tried for a little while, and then I just didn't, you know, get back into it. Kids came along, and the routine went out the window, and all those types of things. Do you, do you think... Is meditation a beneficial beneficial thing for men? Every man needs to meditate. Why? <coughs> mm. Because most men are mentally very overactive mm -hmm. in our world. So it switches off the mind, switches off anxiety, the amygdala, right? So it gets you, allows you more access into your heart, into your instincts. Mm. So every man in our modern world needs to meditate. And initially it was designed just for men. Um, but I think today everybody. Needs I didn't to know meditate. that. I didn't know that yeah. meditation was designed for men. So the ancient, the yogis were always men, mm -hmm. um, and you know, yoga was essentially to calm down the body so that you could sit still, so the body wouldn't affect you, and you can just then, you know, switch off that mind, right? So the mind kind of keeps us in a prison, and that's why you you're with the love of your life. You have everything you want right there, but the box isn't always open to that heart connection. Yeah. Right, because we're always in the mind, we're always thinking in routine, um, all the distractions of the world. Yeah. And in a sense, that's what the world is designed to do. Because when a man and woman is connected in that way, it creates a very powerful field. Okay, this increases your health, your well-being, um, what you can do in the world. It's, it's like a charging point. Yeah. So um, I might have a conversation with couples at a barbecue or anything like that. And me, before, well, before we've got a six-month-old at home, so it's been a bit hectic for the last six months, but we've just got back into the routine of organising at least one date night a month. So no kids, we go out, we get dressed up, we hit the city, we have a few cocktails, we come home a bit too late, have a late dinner at 8.30 at night, which is something that we're, we'll be in bed at 8.30 most nights. Um, but I'll talk to couples that don't, haven't had a date night in six years since they've yeah. had kids. How do they get it back? Like, where do they, is it, does a man need to initiate it? Do they need to come together and have this conversation and be like, we need to, you know, how do they uh, get back to that? I wouldn't say the initial stages of dating, but yeah. you got to try and keep the flame alight, right? Yeah. So date nights can be great because it gets you out of that mental routine because our brain is a catalog. Once it's seen the table, once it's seen the partner, it doesn't see it as if, as if it's here in the present moment. It goes back to the catalog, yeah. right? It does it to save calories. It's a function <coughs> of our survival system. Mm. So that's why sometimes getting out of the house, traveling, you are not using that center. You're in the unknown. It's different, yeah. okay? Um, sometimes it's hard when you have kids to do those things. So always creating variety is important. Um, Look, the man is always the leader in the relationship. So when he initiates something, when he changes his emotion, uh, his partner always changes. I've had, um, you know, men whose wives had drinking problems, right? And this would really upset them. As soon as they, they and they don't drink or, you know, they don't have an issue. As soon as they stop suppressing their negative emotions, their wife stops drinking. Why? Because that's the only way she can release her emotions because she's following him and the suppression. Okay. okay. So a man always leads, even if he thinks he's not, right? So if, if your wife was to organize a date night, well, it probably wouldn't be as sexy or as exciting. It's yeah, kind of yeah. taking away the purpose. So, Takes away the point of it, yeah. Yeah, I recommend a man do that because, yeah, it, it makes her feel like a woman again because a lot of her roles, she may be a mother, she may be working, so she's not in her feminine energy. So anything that makes her feel like she can relax and let go is more mm. chance she's going to give you that love that hormone that you need she normally organizes the babysitter and i organize the night yeah great is that a good way that to do works it? yeah perfect. perfect i'm doing all right yeah yeah, yeah. We're getting there. you're doing well <laughs> the, the fact that you're aware and you want to do it and you know things are good but you realize you want to keep that energy right you you want it to feel 
right? Like something you want yeah, it to yeah. feel <clears throat> like that feeling you had in your heart. So mm. uh, that can take effort getting out of that routine. From a communication standpoint, um, men, like we said, we talked about this, we touched on it a little bit earlier, but men obviously communicate differently to women and we're very practical and we're very, we're very fixery type people. We want to just, you know, there's a problem, oh, we'll just fix it, you know, and we're not very good at listening sometimes. Um, how do you know not talking about myself, obviously. Cameraman. How do you know when to listen and when to fix? <laughs> Good question. <laughs> <laughs> so the way that women cope with stress is that they vent. So it's actually, you can think of yourself as helping your wife fix a problem of releasing stress mm -hmm. by just listening because it actually is very hard for a man to listen, especially an alpha. Because if you are an alpha, and this is biology, if you're listening to someone for too long, it means they know more than you, right? So it can be very challenging for a man to listen to a woman. So you've done very well I, today. <laughs> I've, been, I've been working on it. Yeah, like, it's yeah. very, it's, it's almost your biology is switching yeah, you Yeah, I'm like, oh, you yeah. know. You know, and, and women can often, especially in their feminine, use a lot of words and different and go on different, Tangent. So when two girlfriends have a conversation, you've probably heard it, they will talk for hours and it will go here and there and then there's no logic. And you'll come back from a night out as a man being around your mates and your wife or partner will say to you, what did you talk about? And you'll be like, nothing. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So men and women can communicate completely differently. Yeah. Right. So that's why a lot of the sort of communication and sort of different types it's just a lot of bullshit because it doesn't work yeah so men actually communicate through their feelings okay and a lot of them are gut instincts and these lower feelings right if your heart isn't activated for a masculine man it's often difficult to keep it open because it's vulnerable especially if you've lived through hard things so your communication is often in these lower areas or in these upper areas in the mind. So these are the safe zones, mm -hmm. okay? So men will often feel a woman's emotions as well or her energy. So she might say something to you, oh, you know, I want, can you do this for me? I want more of that or, you know, I'm not happy with this. You will feel that as in you didn't make her happy, you're not good enough, you're a failure, okay? so. That is often the problem. A woman needs to complain to express herself, blah, blah, blah. And the man will take it as I'm not good enough. I'm a failure. This is my fault. Yeah. Okay. So they feel <clears throat> her. And, and women work on a 28 day cycle. So they're <laughs> well, mostly when they're natural and in balanced, they're kind of like this, right? Where a man is on a 24 hour cycle. Okay. You go to work, you do your thing, you overcome challenges, you come home, you need to switch off. Okay, so you build testosterone, you need to repair it. That's it. That's all that's happening. Yeah. So this when communication, I, the words are basically... So I, I know you, you can't listen to me for too long because <laughs> you're a man, but it's, it's a very... It's something we haven't been taught. So you're, you're feeling all the time. It's feelings. We're speaking with our energy in a couple as opposed to our words. That's mm. <laughs> basically what I'm trying to say. Yeah, it's funny because like when um, I can tell when my missus snaps at me and she's it's it'll be some yeah, over something stupid yeah and she's going through her the cycle and i'll just go i'll let it go yeah if i've had a good day i'll let it go yeah but if i'm in a good mood and i'm not stressed and everything's gone all right in my day i'll be like oh, okay yeah it's fine whatever let it go and nine times out of ten the next day she'll be like i'm sorry about last night because i was you know i'm on my period or whatever's happened and blah 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 but it's funny that you mentioned that men are in a 24 hour cycle because I feel that there's nothing worse for a man in a relationship to come home to than a problem immediately. Oh yeah. You need to, yeah. like I, <laughs> if you walk through the door and you're hit with a, you didn't fucking do this and you didn't fucking do that and blah, 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 blah. Like for a bloke, that is probably the most infuriating thing yes. after a day's work. And that's probably why I find <clears throat> I've seen it on the Steve Harvey show where he's, where a woman a woman a woman puts her hand up and she's like my my man is always going to the toilet <laughs> and he's like I can't help you 
I can't help you in this situation because men need five or ten minutes just to like recoup and then and then we can come back and solve the world right but if we don't get that they just bit this build up of frustration and animosity sort of comes into the pits of our you know bellies and and, and we find it really difficult to solve problems or or to yeah. help fix things or be present or whatever it is um so a man in that mode where he's feeling angry <coughs> agitated frustrated mm. He's actually now stepping into his feminine energy because he's depleted his testosterone for the day mm. and he needs to switch off to rebuild. Mm -hmm. So this crankiness as older men, the, you know, the cranky old man, it's because their testosterone is dropping. Mm. Okay. So it's actually you need that rebalance so you can come back and be the solid container, right? The stable, solid container. Okay. Whereas a woman after her long day in the masculine world that we live in, right? If she's working, looking after kids, doing stuff, she will feel stress and it's actually very hard for her nervous system to tolerate. Okay, so she needs to release it. But she's probably not aware that the way that you release it is the opposite, right? And this is where yeah. the issues She can begin. release it 10 minutes after I get home, not immediately. Yeah, and then when yeah, you yeah. both know this about each other, you know, you might come home, uh, do a meditation, have a beer, whatever it is, do a hobby. And then in a few hours, then you talk and then she can release. And all you do is you create a container for her to talk. Okay, ask, mm-hmm, uh-huh, don't say anything, maybe you can think about something else. Try to look away, keep going. <laughs> yeah, yeah, keep going, I'm listening, tell me more. Yeah. And, and this is one of the most common tools I tell my clients. I, you know, I have it all over social media, so it's, I want every man to know this because this, like, reduces half the problems. Ask your wife one question a night or a few times a week, ask her a question. Mm -hmm. Not what's for dinner, where are my keys, that sort of stuff, but... Something where you have to anchor yourself in the present moment and notice something about her. Okay, she's mm. reading this book about history. Ask her about the book or ask her when would you know why she's so interested in history. And then something that makes her look into herself and talk about herself. Because women are not conditioned to talk about themselves, to think about themselves, but about everyone else. Right? So Correct. this allows you to be present and then it mm. allows her to self express. And a self-expressed woman is the best woman in the bedroom. There we go. Oh. I um, it, it it's true what you say about women because um, I find that the happiness of a woman comes from everyone else's happiness, and that the happiness of a man is a bit more on a selfish point of view. That's when it's to a little bit. out of balance. When it's out of balance, yeah. for sure. Um, and if everything's going well in the family, it tends to be like, okay, now the woman's happy type of thing. Um, men, I find when they get to that point of stress, they struggle um, and they, you know, violence and aggression and yep. or distance themselves or need to take time out or whatever it is. You've obviously touched on um, a couple of things that men can do. One of those being ask a question in the evening, which is about them. What are two more things that guys can do to assist in uh, their relationships that to avoid conflict or getting too stressed? Yeah, so <sighs> so that tool is to help, you know, kind of reconnect with their wife. So when their wife is already a little bit unhappy and they've had issues and avoidance, that's a really good tool or a tool for life so it doesn't get that way. Mm. Um, but it's very hard for a man to do this when he's filled with stress or anger because that those negative emotions are like a little monster or a big monster that festers in the basement. And that's why a lot of men avoid. They have to stay at work. They need to do this, do that. They can't create emotional intimacy with their partner or their children mm -hmm. because they have a monster inside them that they're trying to keep at bay. Yeah. And that's the, all the emotions that get pushed into the basement if they're not being, you know, pushed out at war or somewhere like that, right? Mm -hmm. These emotions are tangible things. There's, you know science now to prove this they regulate our nervous system they create our reality they do everything it's our fight or flight mode so really what's important is for a man to learn how to manage his emotions okay what to do with them what are emotions what do they do how can i functionally release them okay how do i manage my hormones um you know i'm around women a lot of the time okay maybe i need to join a gym with men or I need to eat certain foods I need to do something to regulate myself because I'm in an environment that's not working for me mm -hmm. how do I do that so understanding his bodies 
physical body, mental body, emotional body, and spiritual body, getting those into balance. Because otherwise, he's not into balance. And when a man isn't in balance, especially a strong man, he's a danger to everyone, basically. Mm. And the third one, <laughs> is that what you're, <laughs> you <laughs> no, know, no. you're good for now? No, it's I fine. think that's enough for um, now. Look, how do, how, we'll wrap things up, but how, how does someone get, let, let's say someone's listened to this podcast and they're like, this is me. Like, this is so us. Like, this is my relationship or... I'm struggling to navigate some problems that we're going through. Um, how does someone get hold of you? How do they get in touch? Where, where do they get your information, et cetera? Yeah. Um, so if a man wants to work with me or just, you know, ask some questions, ask some insights, um, I, I don't work with women. So the wife doesn't need to be in, involved because the man is the leader. Her nervous system is tethered to his, right? So when you change as a man, she changes automatically. Right. Um, so he can contact me on Instagram, on LinkedIn, um, my website, the Mind Heart Method, um, and yeah, he can watch my masterclass or just chat to me online. Amazing! I'll put all the details in the description below. Sash, thanks for coming on. It's been awesome. Like and subscribe to the channel, guys. That's been another episode. Hope you enjoyed it. Please put any of your thoughts down in the comments. Thanks again. Thank you.